In this exercise, we are given a whole life insurance with benefit, a hundred thousand, issued at the age thirty-five, and the premium are paid annually in advance, and the death benefit is paid at the end of the year of death. In addition, we know the interest, the initial expense is forty percent of the premium plus a fixed expense. One hundred and twenty-five dollars, and the renewal expense is five percent of the gross premium plus fixed amount forty dollars, and this renewal expense is due at the start of each policy year, starting from the second year onwards. In Part A, we are going to calculate this gross premium. We denote as PG. And in order to calculate the PG, we're gonna set the gross future loss at time zero to be zero. The expected present value of the premium is PG times the expected present value of annuity due. For the benefit part, the expected present value is a hundred thousand times expected present value of whole life insurance. Now for the expenses part, the initial expenses is forty percent of the gross premium and fixed expenses one twenty five. And afterwards, each year there is five percent of the premium plus forty dollar. Now since we are using the standard select survival model, we are using the table, so we decompose this. Forty percent premium into two parts, five percent plus thirty-five percent. You can think it as this person pay five percent premium for life, and on top of that, thirty-five percent premium as initial expenses. Similarly, we also decompose this one twenty-five dollars into forty plus eighty-five. So this person pays forty. Dollars for life, and on top of that, eighty-five for the first year. Using this, the expected present value for the expenses part is five percent premium for life plus thirty-five percent at time zero, and forty dollars for life. Plus eighty dollars at time zero. Establishing the equation, the expected present value for the premium is the summation of life insurance benefit plus all the expenses. Please note that here, since the interest is six percent instead of five percent, the expected present value for the annuities and whole life insurance. Cannot be directly obtained from the table provided in the textbook, and they can be calculated using, for example, programming. In the exam, the proper tables will be provided, and it's more important that you know the logic of the solution. Based on those values, we can solve that the gross premium is four hundred sixty nine, eighty one cents. In Part B, we want the net premium policy value. So for the net premium, we ignore the expenses. First, let's figure out what is the net premium. We just need to establish the equality that the expected present value for the premium, which is P N times annuity, is equivalent to the benefit. A hundred thousand times life insurance. Based on this, we can solve that P N is three nine three hundred ninety one and twenty two cents. Now let's look at the net premium policy value at time one. It is the expected present value of benefit outgo subtract the expected present value of Income premium income. At time one, 
this person selected one year ago at age 35 become age 36. Now, if we stand at this point, the expect present value for life insurance benefit is 100,000 times. Now, this person is age 36. As for the premium income, it is PN times annuity due at age 36, selected one year ago. Those are the expected present value, and this gives us in part C, we need the gross premium policy value at time one. So compared with part B, first, our premium itself will be different. And also, when we consider about the policy value, we also need to take into account the expenses. So the gross premium policy value is the expected present value of benefit out go plus expect present value of expenses subtract the expected value of income, the premium. So the expected present value of life insurance benefit is 100,000 times at time one, this person is age 36. Now for the expenses, at time one, we don't have initial expenses anymore. So we just have each year 5% gross premium and $40. So if we look at the expired present value, it is 5% of the gross premium. This one, we got it in part A times annuity due plus $40 per year. So this is the expenses part. Now we subtract the income part, the premium part. It is gross premium times A, 35 plus one. And our final answer is, and in part D, we need to explain why the gross premium policy value is less than the net premium policy value. Those are the policy values we got. Recall how we calculate those values. So for the net premium policy value, it is the expected present value of benefit. Subtract the expected present value of net premium. As for the gross premium policy value, it is expected present value of future benefit plus expected present value of future expenses subtract the expected present value of gross premium. Now, the expected present value of future benefit is the same for both parts. That's just the expected present value for the 100,000 whole life insurance. If we take the difference of net premium policy value and the gross premium policy value, what we get is the expected present value of gross premium subtract expected present value of net premium subtract expected present value of expenses. Let's think about this qualitatively. So we know the gross premium is bigger than the net premium because the gross premium also balance out the expected present value of expenses at time zero. So you can think the expected present value of gross premium 
subtract the expected present value of net premium contains the effect of all the expenses, including initial expense. Now, when we consider the expected present value of expenses at time one, it does not contain the initial expenses. And that's why the difference between the gross premium and net premium, their expected present value is going to be bigger than the expected present value of expenses starting from time one. And this difference is bigger than zero. In this exercise, we need to calculate the gross premium policy value at time one, but assuming a different interest. Everything else are the same. That means here, our premium is same as the gross premium before. So we use the premium from part A. And when we calculate the policy value at time one, the formula is the same as part C. The major difference though, is that now the expect present value for those whole life insurance or annuity will be different based on different interest. Again, those expected present value needs to be calculated using programming and it's more important you follow the logic. And this is the result. In part F, we're going to calculate the asset share. So the asset share is based on the amount of money that the insurance company actually has, and then divided by the number of people who are still alive. Now, suppose in this portfolio, we have n policyholders to start with. Now let's look at the amount of money the insurance company has. At time zero for each policy, they received premium, but they also paid some initial expenses, which is 40% of the premium and fixed expense for 125. And we need to multiply this by N. This is the total amount of money insurance company received at time zero. Now we are at the end of the first year, taking into account the interest by the end of the year, the value of the money, we need to multiply it by 1.06. But at the end of the first year, the insurance company also need to pay life insurance for those people who died. For each of them, they receive 100,000 benefit. And as for how many people died, it is the number of policyholder times the probability of dying within the first year. Also, since we are at the end of first year, so the premium and also expenses for the second year hasn't happened yet. So this is the amount of money the insurance company has at the end of the first year. Now we divide this by the number of people who are still alive. So it is the number of people to begin with times the probability of surviving this first year. Now you can see, in fact, the N will be canceled out. So the asset share does not depend on the number of policies. And our result is, which is exactly the same as the policy value at time one.